we have spent the past couple of videos um, working, well actually starting in video 27, working with orthogonal transformations, and we've continued that discussion, uh, mainly just dealing with uh, two by two um, matrices, so that really what we're considering now is just the rotation matrix, that which takes the x, y axis and tilts them by an angle theta. So, oh, a reminder, the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. So, here we have an x axis and an x prime, y prime axis, and they're related by some matrix, as we've been discussing now ever since video number 27. So, if we have a vector that goes from here to here, it will have x and y components or x prime and y prime components. And what we derived in videos number 30 and 31 were these equations. This relates x prime and y prime in terms of the x and y axis or in matrix form. Then once we derived these equations it was simple enough to derive these equations that relate x and y to x prime and y prime or expressing it in matrix form. But the way that we derived these equations here in the past video, video number 31, um, was pretty pedestrian. Remember what we did was we multiplied both sides uh, here by a sine theta, maybe here by a cosine theta, then added them together in such a way that we could get terms to cancel. Um, that's not the real linear algebra way of doing it. And what, what we want to do in this video is consider the same problem, but from a different point of view. That is, here we have a matrix that takes us from xy into x prime, y prime. Well now, a matrix that does the opposite, takes us from x prime, y prime into x, y, that would have to be the inverse of this matrix. Now since these are orthogonal matrices, this inverse would just be its transpose, which sure enough, that's what we discovered. But what we want to do in this video is go back, pretend like we didn't know this, and say, well here we have this matrix, what is its inverse? Not even realizing that the inverse is its transpose. How would we find that inverse of this? So the way that we would do that is what you saw us do in videos 10 and videos 11. We take an augmented matrix. Here is the matrix that we are starting with. This one here. Here is the identity matrix. And as you saw, as we discussed in, in a lot of detail in, in the videos number 10 and number 11, if we go through row operations to transfer this into the identity matrix, then those same row operations will transform the identity matrix into the inverse of this matrix. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and if we get this, then to be row equivalent to the identity matrix, then this should turn into this. So let's see what happens. The first thing we want to do is make this zero. So we're going to have to multiply then the first row, multiply across by, it looks like the sine of theta, divided by the cosine of theta. Multiply the first row by this and add it to this row. And what will that give us? The first row is unchanged. We don't know what the second row is yet. Okay, multiply across. This will be sine theta over cosine theta times the cosine of theta. That's the sine of theta. Add it to that. That is 
zero. Then here we're going to have sine squared theta over the cosine of theta plus the cosine of theta. So we have sine squared theta over the cosine of theta, multiplying here and adding, plus the cosine of theta. This times 1 is just itself added to 0. We have sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. That times 0 was 0. 0 plus 1 is still 1. So we multiply the first row all the way across by this. Add it to here. We get the second row. Let's look at this. Does this simplify? Here we have sine squared theta plus the cosine squared theta divided by the cosine of theta. This is 1. So this simplifies to 1 divided by the cosine of theta. So let's replace that. Okay, so we multiply the first row by this and add it to this row, we get this expression. Now, we want this to be 1, don't we? So let's divide this first row all the way across by the cosine of theta. So the cosine of theta divided by the cosine of theta, let's just write it out over here, 1 over the cosine of theta. This will be 1. This will be the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. This will be 1 over the cosine of theta. that's still going to be 0. And then for here, for this row, we have 0, 1 over the cosine of theta, sine over the cosine of theta, and we have 1. If we multiply this by the cosine of theta, this will be 0. This will be 1. This will be the sine of theta. And this will be the cosine of theta. OK, so so far we have done one row operation. Multiplied across here and added. And then we just did some simplifications after that. Now, what we want to do is well, this is almost the identity matrix here. This has to be 0. So we have to multiply, it looks like, across by minus the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. Multiply across and add. So let's see what that gives us. This will be row equivalent to, now this stays the same. So we have 0, 1, sine of theta, cosine theta. So we're multiplying this row by this, and then we're going to add it to this one. This times 0 is 0, 
0 plus 1 is 1. Minus the sine theta, cosine theta times 1 is just that. Add it to there. That's going to be 0. OK. Now, what about here? Here we have minus the sine squared of theta divided by the cosine of theta plus this. So we have minus sine squared theta divided by the cosine of theta plus 1 over the cosine of theta. OK, and let's see. Then we have to multiply here. This will give us, this cancels. We're going to have minus the sine of theta plus 0 is minus sine of theta. Let's write this more neatly. OK, let's check this. We multiplied across this row by this number. So this times 0 is 0, add that to 1, that's 1. This times 1 is just itself, add it to that, it's 0. This is minus the sine squared of theta over the cosine of theta plus 1 over the cosine of theta. Okay? And this will be minus the sine of theta plus 0 is minus the sine of theta. Well, this, let's see if we can simplify this term. We have 1 over the cosine of theta. Well, here we have this is over the cosine of theta. So we have 1 minus the sine squared of theta divided by the cosine of theta. This term right here is, let's write it more neatly. They both have the same denominator, the cosine of theta. So we have 1 minus the sine squared of theta divided by the cosine of theta. That's the cosine squared divided by the cosine this is just going to be then the cosine of theta. So this whole term right here is the cosine of theta. So let's write that in. And then we are finished. So here, we transformed this matrix into the identity matrix. And now did we transform this, the identity matrix, into this? Is this now the inverse of this? Well, of course, this is an orthogonal matrix. So its inverse is going to be its transpose. This column will be that first row. That second column will be that second row. So indeed, this is the transform of this. We just verified that. So what we're saying is that back in video number 31, when we derive this, instead of going through all that mumble jumble of multiplying each side by a sine or a cosine and adding them up so that terms cancel, we could have derived this just by going through our Gauss-Jordian reduction like you saw us do in video number 10 and 11. Going through that exact same procedure, of course, gives us the same matrix. Okay, that's all we have to say for the moment for um, orthogonal 
matrices. In the next video, though, we're going to consider them more, and that subject matter will lead us into the principal axis of transformation and how that applies to quadratic matrices.